With us today is Kyle Samani to talk about all things crypto. Welcome to the program, Kyle. Jason, pleasure to be on the show. Longtime fan. Honored oh, to be thank here. Thank you. Oh, that's, that's very kind of you. Um, I know that a number of my besties uh, were early supporters of uh, Multicoin Capital. My friend Vinny Lingham, I guess, is one of your partners. He uh, introduced you guys to the famous Bill Lee that nobody knows, uh, who's actually the greatest investor, <laughs> angel investor of all time, the true goat. But since he's underground, I get to claim that uh, title. And then uh, my friend David Sachs, of course, from Kraft, were anchor LPs in your fund. So tell us about what was multi, what is multi-coin? Tell us about that first fund and the thesis for how you're investing. Uh, sure. So multi-coin capital is an investment firm uh, based in Austin, Texas. We have 15 employees, uh, a few billion in, in assets across various funds. We have two primary fund structures we manage, uh, a hedge fund and a venture fund. Kraft was uh, an investor in both of those vehicles. And we invest in crypto things. We invest predominantly in tokens. We do invest in equity from time to time, but are definitely token focused investors. Um, we have kind of three mega theses that we've outlined on our website, and those have been there for a few years and continue to guide our investments. And I expect these will, uh, theses will continue to compound indefinitely. Um, those three theses are open finance, which is kind of a superset of DeFi, uh, the web three and the opportunity for non sovereign money. I think out of everything we, we have done falls in one of those three buckets, although I'll, I, will, I will admit Web3 is a little bit broad um, and a little bit all-encompassing. Um, today, between our hedge fund and our venture fund, uh, although the, the, the legal structures are mechanically different, um, they're the same investment team manages both of those, um, and it's the same core theses across them. And in fact, there's a lot of name overlap as well between them. Um, our venture funds are typically higher risk, higher reward, more concentration in newer names. Our hedge fund is a larger, later stage entity um, than holds, ends up holding a lot of the same names because we like to hold stuff that we like and we like to hold as much of it as we can. Um, and that's kind of how we do things. And uh, part of the idea is that you will run one of the nodes on these new networks so you get to understand it. So you're actually participating in the formation in some way of these new projects, I guess, is what we call them today, not companies, they're projects, correct? People use the term project, tomb protocol, um, collective, DAO. I mean, there's there's a lot of we weird names for these things. Um, running nodes is part of, of, you know, being involved in these systems. But I would argue it's actually some somewhat of a commodity. Um, we don't run nodes in house ourselves, we work with probably 15 different firms externally to, to do various node operational things. Um, and, we, and we work with 15 and not one uh, because we want to be decentralized and help these networks stay physically um, and organizationally decentralized. Um, I think the, the, the real value add we bring when we work with portfolio companies, or portfolio protocols, whatever you'd like to call projects, them. Projects, yep. Projects. Projects, protocols, and platforms. I guess the three Ps. I'm trying to understand this myself, <laughs> but I get it. Um, yep. But I mean, it comes from, I'd say, stuff that looks more like what VCs do. So helping with recruiting, helping with messaging, helping uh, with strategy. Um, and, and then I think a couple of things that are particularly unique to crypto, um, the most notable of which I would highlight is what I'll call engaging in crypto capital markets. Um, capital markets and equities, both public and private, um, they, they evolve over time, but they're relatively static at any moment in time. Mm. Um, and because they're quite regulated, um, it's hard for them to change. Probably, the, for example, the, the largest change that's happened over the last decade has been the, the length of time at which private companies stay private. Um, and in crypto, you have kind of the exact opposite phenomenon that's happened, um, which is these things go public, you know, at one month or maybe like six months old. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's a very different set of things that, that happens in the life of, of building something of value. Um, it changes how you have to think about messaging and, 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 uh, to constituents groups. So customers versus users versus speculators. Um, those are different constituencies. And like, it, it's not always obvious, um, how to think about balancing those different stakeholder groups. Um, in particular, there's even the venues in which people trade these assets are obviously different. These are not trading on the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ. Um, and how do you, you know, uh, Again, like even messaging, right? You don't have quarterly reports or 10 Qs or any of these things. So figuring out the right kind of communication and uh, cadence and format and strategy, um, thinking about exchanges, thinking about countries that 
thinking about languages, like this is just a very different set of problems. Mm. Um, right. Even most American publicly traded companies, I would venture to guess, have extremely few Chinese retail investors as owners of their, their, uh, their equity. Um, in crypto, that's probably not true. Mm. And so, um, you know, young, uh, groups of people working on these interesting hard problems have to deal with, you know, these kinds of things. And it's very non-intuitive how to go about thinking about messaging and communicating and coordinating in this new capital market. Um, folks like us, you know, who've done this 30, 40, 50 times, um, have seen what works and what doesn't work and can help those teams kind of figure out the right capital markets engagement strategy. Um, I think that's a, one of the things we do that's, that's particularly unique and it t- takes years of doing this to kind of figure out h- how to so really do it. 30 or 40 times you've met a founding, founding members of a project, a company, a team, a crypto project, and then been the first investor or amongst the first investors who buy those tokens in the initial token sale. Is that correct? Correct. How do you find those companies? Uh, wh- are they all hanging on a telegram or is it, you know, uh, on a uh, discord servers or is it just in the just a crypto community writ large? Yeah, I mean, that's the way we source deals and, and get deals done is, is pretty similar to how most VCs do it. So we have networks, obviously, in the crypto community, other investors, other entrepreneurs, people are sending us stuff all the time. Uh, we know a lot of people directly, obviously, and they just cold you know, message us and, and we chat. I love cold emails. My Twitter DMs are open for better or for worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so stuff comes in that way. Um, you know, there's hackathons, which, you know, again, we attend and, and are kind of involved with in various forms. So the actual mechanics of sourcing are, are pretty, pretty standard. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in terms of getting deals done, I would also say it's pretty standard. The only difference really between, I'd say, deals we do and um, traditional equity deals is these token provisions that are added to them. Um, the token provisions are unfortunately not as standardized as I would I would like, um, and that's just the reality of teams being in different countries, um, LLCs versus C corps, um, some warrants and other things. There's a lot less standardization there than than. Um, so, with a project yeah. like Solana, how did you find them, and then how did that initial token offering go down? How much did you put in? How many tokens were released? When did all that happen? Tell us the story of Solana. Yeah. So. Um, I actually don't remember who introduced us to Anatoly. Vinny. But, uh, Vinny, Vinny may have introduced us. So I yeah. uh, met with Anatoly at some point in April of 2018 while I was in SF for some other reason. Um, I recall a few things about that first meeting. Um, one, the title slide, the, the subtitle of the title slide said NASDAQ for blockchain. And I, w- I remember thinking this is very corny and like overplayed, but like, okay, mm-hmm. you're, you're making a very pointed argument or, or claim. Yeah. Um, and then two, Anatoly, um, had a very different background than all of the other layer one founders I had spoken to. What does um, layer one mean to, for people who are neophytes? Yeah. So, I mean, Bitcoin is a layer one. Ethereum is a layer one. Um, Polkadot was kind of a layer one, uh, Phantom, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon. A layer one what? What does it uh, sorry, mean? Sorry, a, a layer one blockchain. So these are, this is a, the actual physical network of nodes that are maintaining a database that can run smart contracts of, of some form. Got it. So when people launch a project, they can launch on a layer one platform, and that's where their tokens reside, and they don't have to build the infrastructure over again. Correct. Yes. Got it. Committing to security and compliance is vital for startup growth, and proof of security has never been more important. As you scale, you might start to receive more SOC 2 requests from customers, of course, and that's where Drata comes in. Trata is a compliance automation platform used by some of the world's leading CISOs, CISOs, you may have heard of it, Chief Information Security Officers. A lot of early stage startups don't have a CISO, despite the obvious importance of security and compliance. With Drata, you can easily meet requirements, support enterprise deal flow, and track compliance. Drata helps customers prepare for and clear SOC 2 and other audits, go from zero to audit ready in a matter of weeks. Take it from Philip Martin, Chief Security Officer at Coinbase. He called Drata solution well ahead of other market players and said Drata provides users with the most advanced automation available. So here's your CTA. Check out Drata's five-star reviews on G2 and see why companies like ClearCo and Smart Recruiter work with Drata for their compliance needs. Twist listeners can get 15% off and waived implementation fees at drata.com slash twist. D-R-A-T-A dot com slash twist. 